So welcome to another war game review from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at, <laughs> let me get the name right, Road to Independence, colon, The American Revolution, 1775 to 1783. Bingo. Okay, so... <laughs> 1783, you say? That's an awful long time. Most games just don't do that. Sure. Uh, so th this is one of the very interesting parts of this game. So this is a game that is uh, a collaboration between the Historical Game Company and Blue Panther. It is a two-player, dice-chucking kind of... Strategic level. Yahtzee-style... Yep. ...light game. Yep. Played about an hour, hour and a half? Yeah, about 90 minutes. I think that's yep. what it was. Uh, so this game's designed by uh, Stephen King. Kling. Kling. I knew I was going to say Stephen that. King's a writer. I knew Stephen I was Kling gonna, is, a, is a writer, too. I know. But he's a designer I as well. I knew I was going to say that. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Uh, we've played a few of his other games. Uh, yeah. The Historical Game Company does like uh, a series of these little Hex Encounter battle games. Battle uh, for Cahokia, Fort Jefferson Attack. I think we have a couple other ones. Yeah, we well. do have a couple of others uh, we haven't gotten to yet. So we played those are nice little light intro games. This one's yeah. a very different style of game from those. It is, yeah. Um, and it's very interesting. Uh, it's a... And there are more games that coming like this. Really? Yeah, oh, that's They're going to do a series of three or four of these, and I believe this was the first one. Um, that makes me happy to hear, because I yeah. had a fun time playing this. this oh, is no doubt. Not, uh, not a heavy, big war game. This is not an ultra-historical game. Nor is it necessarily a big tactical game. It's your dice chucking. It is a dice chucking, a dice like assignment and fulfillment yep. game. But, Think but you do have to make choices. Oh, yeah. Right? There are significant choices about when you roll your handful of dice, how you place them to defeat whatever you're attacking. Yeah, how you roll through your dice is yep. very key. Knowing what the dice makeup is, knowing what the chances are, knowing what is needed to defeat the defenses that are there for each location. It's not. It's not just dice chucking. There's, but it's fun dice chucking. It's yes. seven or eight dice that you're rolling. Ooh, they sound so good. And the di and the dice are all custom and yep. they're very well made. Yes. And the, it's it's a competitive uh, game as well. So we've played a game that uses this kind of style of dice mechanic, which is cooperative, which, which is Elder Sign. Yeah. Uh, if you've played Elder Sign you kind of know how to play the core mechanic of this game, yep. which is you roll that hand of dice and you're trying to get the assignments in the lines to take that area yep. and it become yours. And so you're trying to roll like a cannons because this area had a big fort or you're trying to yep. roll your Indians because there was a, you know, this was a wilderness area or you needed a calf, so you needed to roll some calf. And all the different dice types have different amounts and values on their faces yep. and things like that. Uh, but doing it competitively was very interesting because oh, yeah. you also had your little garrison markers that mm -hmm. you could put out. To Which is a key part of the key. decision points in the game. Because those will add to mm -hmm. the value that needs to be overcome in a given yeah. region and a, a given line within that region. They might mm -hmm. have a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're trying to play those defensively and then you're trying to attack with your dice. And, but your opponent's trying to play defensively, and so do you kind of go into that and hope to yeah. overcome those ones or go somewhere else? Yeah. Uh, now, really now, fun. Now, I know we, we looked at the board, or, or will look at the board, but these cards, there are location cards, and you can see they're, they're pretty basic, right? Yeah. But they are tied to locations here on the board in one of two of the, of the theaters of the American Revolution. There's the Wilderness Theater, which is kind of the West, and then the Eastern Theater, which is everything the East and into Canada. But these location cards tie to them, and they have it on the board, but it's printed really smallly. Yes. We, we kind of said, just double the size of the board, and maybe you don't even have to have the location cards, but the location cards really aided you in building your tableau and yeah, counting you up your victory them. points. But you're able to see, okay, these are the defenses. Got to roll my dice. I got to match these defenses up. And we're looking here at Albany. Albany isn't really all that easy to defeat. It's worth two victory points. It has four different parts of defense. One is a fort, which a, every dice has a fort, I believe. I think you might be right. All of them have forts, but it's only one in six. Yeah. So it's hard to roll, but you're probably going to get the forts, but you've got to sacrifice an entire dice to do that. If you didn't roll one of your weaker die... You're a militia or you're a regulars, 
then you might have to use a colonial die that's your best die as the Americans to satisfy that. Or <laughs> yeah. you make a choice, okay, I'm going to put dice somewhere else and then try again. And that's but just it's, it. You've got these four criteria to fulfill, and you can only fulfill them one at a time. Yep. You can't, oh, I rolled, I rolled everything. three guys, a cannon, yep. and a four. I can fulfill all three of those. You pick one. You pick one, and you yep. roll everything again. So, And we've, again, we've played a lot of games that have that kind mm -hmm. of a mechanic in it, and it's a fun little board game mechanic. Because it makes, I think it makes some key and important decisions, but it's light. Yes. And it's interesting. And you're pushing your luck. Because there will be many times you're like, okay, I know my red die is the British, is the best die, yeah. right? The Hessians, I think, are actually the same. I think they're identical. So yeah. those are your two best die, but you, you may not be able to sacrifice that die for certain things because you're like, that's the only way I'm going to get four you know, infantry to defeat that because these have more of those. Yeah. So you, it's, you don't want to put four ones there. No. You want to put a three and a one. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so and, it only uses two dice instead of four. But and, and that's kind of, it's interesting too, the shapes of the defenses on the, tell you how many die it's probably going to take, right? Four here, it's going to take at least two dice. Yep, can't do it on one. And then a three, it's even going to take. It's most likely yeah, going to take you It's two. most likely going to take two, but it can take just one. And then these others, it's just but then, one. But that's where those garrisons become really important. Do yep. I put my garrison to make a hard one impossible or yep. to make a doable one very a hard to put two hard ones? Yeah. So that's those defensive decisions are kind of really fun as well of like but, how, how do you yep. approach that? But each attack, you have seven dice made up of a different accumulation based on which theater you're in. Also a really cool... Yeah, very cool. There's also some event cards that can affect that. There's some events that will happen like... Uh, Baron von Steuben showing up, training the Continental Militia and making them better. So you start getting more regular dice and you lose some of your Militia dice, which is a good thing, but it's also not a great thing because you lose some of those. You lose uh, access to the... To some the, of the symbols. It, yeah. So, but you're going to roll seven dice. You're going to roll. If you didn't make anything, you're going to have to subtract a die, choose a die that's probably your worst die and get it off. And then you got to roll a six die again until you get something. Yeah, and if you mess up that, you lose a die yep. and you roll five. So you've got this degrading dice pool yep. if you're not fulfilling things. But when you fulfill things, you commit them and you don't roll them again. Yep. It's just a fun... Very interesting. Light mechanic. This is the kind of game that we're going to play for fun. It's going to take us an yeah. hour or 90 minutes. But it's also the kind of game that you're going to take and like play with your father on, mm -hmm. a, on a vacation. Or, or your children. Or like yeah, it's, it's a, it's a yeah. light game. You're going to make anywhere from two to three attacks in your turn. Okay, I'm going to do here, here, and here. Great. You pull out the little card, you chuck the dice, chuck the dice, chuck the dice. Did yeah. I do it? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And then you go to the next one. Chuck the dice, chuck the dice, chuck the dice. And so it's not, it's not like it's like it's complex, no. convoluted rule system. It's really not. And it's just a case of the British have to get to, I think it's 30 Yeah, I think it was points. 30, and they start at 25. So they're very close to victory, but they're, they're going to lose stuff. They're real very quick. far away from it though, because you have to have four of the seven red yes. ones and all like key locations. I think they control yep. none. So the key locations are like New York, uh, Boston, Philadelphia, the and then New Orleans, which is controlled by yeah. the Spanish. St. Louis and Charleston. So yep. that was the other interesting part about this game is that you had this. Uh, the Wilderness Theater, as it's called here, but you got out to New Orleans, you got out to St. Louis. None of that stuff has been in, I don't think, any of the, yeah, none of the other games, games that we've, we've played. played. No. And so that was fun, seeing that mm -hmm. extra stuff. You know, the Spanish like aren't in the war, and then they kind of join on, and all of a sudden, i got more things to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very but the, yes. the Spanish and French do come into the game, which is kind of cool. I think historically it's pretty, pretty neat, and it includes a lot of those elements. But once again, it boils down to it's a fairly simple, easy, yep. rules light game where you're drawing some event cards, adjudicating them, doing some attacks, rolling some dice, and seeing what, what ends up happening. Yeah, they, <laughs> and a huge kudos to Blue Panther. They went out of their mm -hmm. way to order these custom dice, and they are absolutely stunning. Yeah. That's like the main focal part, point of the game. You will roll an unconscionable amount of dice in this. A lot. And they are wonderful to handle and to play with mm -hmm. and to look at. And so I'm glad that they really went that extra mile. I'm really yeah. happy for that. Yeah, and because of that, I think the price of the game is a little higher some, than some of the other games, but it's good production. 
you're going to be able to use these dice forever. They're never going to wear. You can roll those a thousand times and there's nothing going to happen to yeah, them. Yeah, like they're like fully like embossed and inked. It's yep. not stickers. It's not printed yeah. or anything Very like nice. that. Very nice. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll show you how the game works. Uh, that's not particularly complicated. And then no. what we'll do is we'll wrap with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Um, the, we've got a nice cute little uh, 22 by 17 map. And you can see... It's it's oriented <laughs> so that the east coast is facing the bottom of the board, uh, but you're both intended to sit uh, on one side of the board and kind of play it this way. We say opposite. You can do it either way that you want, but all all of the charts and the sequence of play are facing this direction. And as you can see, like you've got all the regular east coast kind of down to uh, Florida. Then it goes further out into the Midwest, all the way out to St. Louis, down to New Orleans as well. So you get a little bit of the Spanish involved later on in the war, uh, more things to consider, and you get more of this frontier war, which you don't see in a lot of Amrev games that focus on uh, the kind of the big, more um, standard battles that you would expect. Uh, but the gameplay, very simple. Uh, you just go through this sequence of play, um, and you, what you're going to do is you're just going to roll the naval die as the British. Here, we're going to. This is the end of the game, and I got crushed horribly as the British. But basically, it's always British first. They're going to roll the naval die. And they got a two and three chance of getting navy. Uh, and so that means that they can do naval moves if they wish. And then you pull a card from your deck of event cards. And I'm a level with you. The British events are pretty mediocre or not good. <laughs> I felt like the uh, the American ones were a little bit better for the Patriots. So you're going to flip a card and you're going to do the event. And it says the British player may reroll one auxiliary one time for each location attack in the Eastern Theater, north of Baltimore and Morgantown against, or against Wyoming Valley during this turn. So that's either here uh, or it's uh, north of these two. So you can go basically any of these spaces, you can reroll one of your auxiliary green dice uh, for each attack that you do. So that basically that incentivizes us to kind of attack up here. Um, typically you can only attack from a space which you are adjacent to. Um, but we have naval moves so we can do that too. Um, but here the, the Americans took up a whole bunch of stuff so let's clear off some of this so we can just show you some examples. And you have three attack markers and you're going to designate where you're attacking. So you're going to say, I'm going to attack from this area to this area. So we're going to do an attack there. We are going to do an attack from Montreal into Ticonderoga. Sure, why not? And we're going to do an attack into Maine from either one of these spaces. It doesn't matter. Now, both all of these are land connections. That's totally fine. If we had wanted to, we could do a naval move. So instead of doing Ticonderoga, we can just have the British Navy with, um, with troops and Marines to say, hey, we're going to go and attack Baltimore because there is a port there. So let's say we're going to do that just to just to show that off. And basically, you're going to roll dice in a Yahtzee style. If you've ever played a game called Elder Sign, which is a, a little old game, um, Eldritch Horror uh, from Fantasy Flight, it's wonderful, very fun, very light. You're going to roll very similarly to that. Now, what you can't see off screen is a massive tableau of these cards that represent these different locations. And we're going to pull those, and that's what we're going to go. So we have the main, and we do that, all of your targets are here, so you could play off of this, but they give you the reference card just so it's easier to kind of stack them and calculate your points, but also this is a bit bigger to see and to put your dice on to hold them. So we've got main that we're going to attack, and we're going to attack Wyoming Valley, uh, which is, we had these in alphabetical order, here it is, it's Wyoming Valley. And we're going to do New York as well. So New York is down here. And all of those are north of Baltimore and Morgantown and include Wyoming. So we're going to get to re-roll. Oh, I said we were going to do Baltimore, so not New York. So I don't get the re-roll down in Baltimore. Uh, let's just, where the hell is Baltimore? These are in alphabetical order like an idiot. There we are. And so what you're going to do is you're going to pick the appropriate dice for the appropriate theater. So we have the Brown Wilderness Theatre and the Green Eastern Theatre. And that determines which dice you roll based on this play aid. So we're going to be rolling against Wyoming. The British attack is going to roll three reds and four greens. Yeah, this is green and this is yellow. So just, you know, <laughs> there you go. So four of those and three of those. And we're going to roll in our nice on our skull. So we're going to attack Wyoming Valley. So we're going to roll the dice. 
and we are attempting to... Ugh, this is really gross. So we got one cannon, so we're going to put one cannon here. Because we succeeded in filling any one of these rows, we just get to keep rolling. If you couldn't fill a row, you discard a die, and then you roll again. But you're just trying to fill the rows. So next, and you don't have to designate which one, you just keep going. So here we've got four regulars that we need. I've got three, four, five, six, and I'm choosing those ones because these are two single Indians and you only get those on the yellow dice. So using the red dice down there helps to preserve our capacity to roll for these two. So we're gonna roll them, we're just looking for these Indian symbols. Uh, and I did, I did get one, which is nice. And then I've got three more, I'm just trying to roll one Indian and the nice thing is, so I didn't get it, so if I fail, normally I have to discard a dice and keep rolling. Before I do that, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, because I can't roll one on here. So we're just going to discard and roll again. And I didn't get it here, so this is where I'm going to use this ability. I'm going to re-roll one auxiliary dice, trying to get that one symbol. I did not get it, so I have to discard one of these two dice. And a last chance to get it, and I got it. Amazing. How, great luck. That never happened to me in the whole game. <laughs> so we succeeded by filling all of these, everything we needed to, to complete the assault. So I claim Wyoming Valley that goes into my tableau on my side of the board. We're going to place a little British control marker there. And this is my, I get a point. So a little victory point goes up one. Yay. And you're going to do the same thing in each one of these spots. But when you roll in the Eastern Theater, you have better troops, better training, better supply. And so you're going to roll different dice. So we're going to roll two red, we're going to roll our two hessians, and we're going to roll one auxiliary for each of these two attacks. So for Baltimore, if this Baltimore is very difficult, so we'll show you what that looks like. Really, I'm trying to get that three dice, or the cannon and the cav, because both of those are very difficult to do. And we got nothing in that attack. That was really bad. So, like, what I could do is I could spend all six of these, right, to fill up this. I could do that, but now I have to roll perfectly to get all of these. The likelihood of that happening is very, very, very low. And um, I don't have anything to meet these requirements, so I'm just going to keep the fort and hope for a good roll coming up here. Uh, that is a better roll. It's still not great because it's still going to consume three of the dice, which is really we wanted to roll that six on two dice. So we're going to do that there. And now we need a cav and a cannon on the same roll, which is very difficult and I've never been able to do it in this whole game. <laughs> yep, so we're going to lose this. I'm going to roll. This has to be a perfect roll. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Everyone's seen that. You can't take that back. I wish that happened in the game. Uh, so we got our cav again. So we successfully take Baltimore. That was very challenging, right? That was very difficult. I had to have some luck there to do it. I'm going to claim Baltimore as my own. I'm going to get two points. One, two. Uh, and then this is going to come British control. And then we're going to go again here. Uh, and after we've done all that, let's say we mess up the, the main role. Usually you're like exchanging. Uh, you're only going to get one or two. It's rare to get all three just because it's hard to do those things. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to reassign all your garrisons. So we have these garrisons, and basically you've got four of them, and you're going to put them out. So I'm going to definitely put two guys in Baltimore, uh, and then I'm going to put one in Savannah to help protect there. I'm going to put a couple in Wyoming Valley, and uh, I'm going to put one in Ticonderoga, just to make that a bit more difficult. Why that's important is because when uh, they go to attack Baltimore, What's going to happen now is instead of needing those six guys, they need eight in this row. If they were attacking Savannah, instead of needing four guys, they would need five. Uh, so you've got two ones and two twos on your garrisons. And it just makes it more difficult. You don't have enough to cover your whole front line, so you will have weaker areas. But th they can make a big difference, and we saw them do that. Now I've done that, it just flips over to the American side, and they can do exactly the same thing, except they don't have naval capacity. Uh, eventually they're going to start rolling to see if the French join and they're going to start exchanging some of their auxiliary dice for French dice. Eventually they're going to roll to see if the Spanish join and the Spanish can make these attacks kind of uh, out in the frontiers, out in the west, in the wilderness. 
And, and that's really the game. You just go back and forth, back and forth, lots of exchanging of territories. It is a dice fest. You never like defend, defend. So it's just like people rolling at you and taking yourself, you roll at them, take it back. That is a light, fun game with absolutely gorgeous dice. Like these are really nice. Here, I, I gotta show you these because they are embossed uh, and colored with inks. These are, I mean, Blue Panther knocked it out of the park with these. The printing accuracy on the cards compared to other games that have been produced with them that we've played is really sharp. Like the production value, eat for a small little game like this, uh, from them, this is one of the best produced games that they've put out, genuinely. Um, rule book's fine, nothing wrong with that. Uh, one little question, because uh, some French rules were buried somewhere where I couldn't find them, but it's a small rule book, so that was easy enough to find. But that's the game, it is not complicated, back and forth, you're gonna play 10 turns, um, and there's 15 events, so you're never going to play all the events, but uh, what we'll do is we'll wrap up here with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the game. Um, again, it, it, it's very easy to play. Like, yeah. we read the, how, the rule it's book. like four pages of rules. It's, yeah. Maybe of, six pages. Of actual rules, it is like ten pages, but yeah. that's a, this is a page where it's got like six sentences on it. It's, yeah. not, it's, yeah. it's not a serious, pretty light. Uh, like, yeah, heavy rule book. And, and I think that's, to me, if you can design a game that's playable with only four to five real pages of rules, you, you've done a pretty good job in explaining them. I don't think there were any real questions that I had. The only questions I think I did have, for instance, at the beginning of our first play, we used the French dice a little wrong. They can only attack into... Uh, port areas, I believe. Yes. And we weren't doing yeah, there's, that there's right. There's a limitation on where those can be used. So yeah. that was kind of cool. The other thing that was kind of not really confusing, but the naval die, we were unsure about how that affected lakes, but I think ultimately those don't need the naval die no, they don't. to work. But that was something I was like, well, it doesn't really say. Is that part of it? But I do like the naval die. It's kind of cool. I like how the Spanish and the <clears throat> French can come into the game. I just think there's a lot, a lot to like in this little game. Yeah, and again, it's not. This isn't. You know, this game probably isn't for everyone. Like the most hardcore sure. people might not be like. They might. You know, it's not for them. But there's but a do lot you of like fun. Yes, we do, do. You like rolling dice. I do. I yeah. like all those things. Those things are both in this game. So who's not to Th say this is a good game? This game has a spot in. I would say a yeah. lot of people's collections for. I know an hour and a half is not a filler game, but like, sure, it kind of is when it comes to wargaming. We're gonna play. A we big... just played a five-hour game before you know we yeah. we did this one, and then like I could squeeze this in. Yep. Or if it's Thanksgiving and we've had a big old meal, yeah, uh, I am like half asleep. I'm gonna play a nice little light small game like this. Sure. Whilst the, you know the turkey and gravy sink down yep. a bit. Yep. Yep. That's what this is for. You know, it's a fun game Agreed. to kind of put into a collections to put into a game session and you get a bit of history. This would probably be pretty good as a classroom game as well. Oh, I would agree with uh, that, yeah. to teach some of that. And again, you get more than just kind of the Eastern Seaboard. You get the, you know, the yep. stuff into the wilderness, which that was really fun to play around with. You oh, just yeah. don't do a lot well, of Well, and to understand how that affected other areas, I, I thought was was important. So in order to win the game, you've got to have at least something out there, yep. right? St. Louis or New Laura, Orleans, you've because. You're not going to get Philadelphia and Boston, most likely. Yeah. If it's going to be real hard. If you don't get those, you have to take everything on the yeah. other side of the map, basically. Now, Yorktown is very takeable. Uh, I feel like Charleston was, good, yeah. was very takeable. But New York and, and Philadelphia and Boston, they, they were real hard. So you're going to have to dabble out there into the Western Wilderness Theater, and, and that's cool. Yeah. But a good-looking game. I think there's a lot of fun here. Simple rules. Love the dice. I enjoyed this one. Yeah, I had I had a blast with it. I know Steve showed us the map mm -hmm. a few, gosh, like Buckeye six game months ago, Fest. Buckeye Game Fest, and it was like, cool. But once the game arrived, and I really was like, oh, that's mm -hmm. what this game is. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it was really enjoyable. I had a good time with it, that's yeah. for sure. Great production value. I think it's well designed. It's fun. Yes. I had a good time with it. So uh, Road to Independence from Blue Panther and the Historical Game Company. Uh, check this out if this is something you're interested in, but appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from LayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.